All right, time to learn functions. Uh, functions are an incredibly useful feature in every programming language, and Python is no different. It uh, makes declaring and calling and using functions very easy, uh, like most of Python. So uh, the idea behind a function is that we have some code that we want to repeat or execute repeatedly, kind of like when we used to use loops. However, uh, unlike a loop, there's not a uh, particular list or number of iterations that we know ahead of time that we always want to run through. Um, with a function, we simply want to say, all right, here's some code logic that we're going to store for later and call it whenever we need it so we don't have to retype it every time. So to declare a function, it's actually pretty straightforward. Keyword DEF. So to start as an example, I'm going to show you how something like uh, an Excel sum function would work uh, or look. We call Excel sum functions inside of a cell and we just sit equals sum and in parentheses we put the uh, uh, the the cells that we want to add up a function in a programming language is written with the exact same log logic so let's start by giving this function a name uh, let's just call this one sum just like we would with excel uh, also like with excel we have some parameters that need to be passed in we need to tell it what we want to have summed so in this case i'm going to put in um, just a list and to give it a name that makes sense to you, a list to sum, we'll call it. So as with our loops and our if statements, followed up with a um, with a colon. Uh, and of course, everything that's going to go inside this function is now going to be uh, tabbed in or spaced in just like this. So a function is always, well, often going to return some value back. And definitely in the case of the sum, sum function, it's going to return the sum of some list of numbers. So uh, let's start by declaring a variable to keep track of that. We'll call this number to return. Now there's no reason or rule that it needs to be called that. Um, I'm just making it semantic so it makes sense what this variable represents. So we're going to say this equals zero for now. We're just going to start declare it as, a, as an integer. And uh, if someone's passed in a list of numbers to be summed, then let's use a loop to loop through the list. So uh, let's say for, um, we'll call it, number or num yeah yeah number in uh, list to sum because remember we're expecting if anyone's going to use this function that whatever gets passed in right here is going to be a list data type so assuming it is if they don't we're going to get a, an error here because we're using a, uh, a for loop that's creating a variable called number in this variable called list to sum that gets passed in so whatever they pass in it doesn't matter what they call it as long as it's a list that gets passed in because we're renaming whatever they whatever they called their list to this variable name right here list to sum so that now uh, we can call it right here using that same name all right so for number and list uh, let's add a colon here uh, and now let's iterate through and actually add, add each of our numbers together so we're going to say number to return equals um, and i was going to say equals number to return plus uh, number but I think we can just say number to return plus equals number. So basically, it'll start with itself, which is zero, and add this number, which represents each number in that list as it gets iterated through here. So plus equals number. Uh, let's see here. Next, all we got to do is return. So let's return. So they'll, this I, I tabbed it right here because this returns not inside the four. Right, so we're only going to return a number back to the user when all of the logic is done. So this is our logic right here. At the very end, we're going to return number to return. And it's tabbed here because it's a child element inside the defined function right here called sum. Okay, before uh, we go on and learn how to call this function, I want to make one more so we can do both examples at once. So let's make another function uh, down here. So again, we use the keyword DEF, and let's call this one, um, uh, let's make it find matching. All right, so this one's gonna take two parameters. Before we pass in a list, this function we're gonna use to see if uh, a string, maybe like a string that's given to us by a user or an input that comes from a user is found uh, in some list of results. So for example, like when you're searching on Google for some keywords and we want to return results that include those keywords. So this is going to be, uh, we'll teach you how to create Google right now. <laughs> 
So let's call the first parameter we want list to search. And we use a comma to say that we need another parameter. Much like if you're, if you think back to Excel, often when you call a function, it needs more than one input or more than one parameter and you separate them by columns, or sorry, commas. We do this the exact same way. So let's call, uh, we'll call this the query. It's really just a term. Uh, we'll keep it simple. We'll make it one word for now. All right. So here's our function. Let's go ahead and declare, let's make, um, Let's make a sub list. Let's return to them back. How about a list of all uh, query results that were in some original list that match or contain that query term. So let's call this matching items and we'll give it a um, equals open close empty list basically. So empty list called matching items. So now let's say for item or for item. Yeah, for item in list to search so another for loop here we want to take the list they gave us again remember that we don't know what name they called that list it doesn't matter what they called it they just had to pass a list object right here uh, and we rename it by using the word list to search and when we rename it here we can now use this name to refer to whatever list gets passed in when someone calls this function all right so for item in list to search uh, let's say if uh, query that's the string they gave us or the term that they gave us that they're searching for if query in item now remember item represents each one of the individual items in this list of search object so if the if the word they gave us is in um, is in the item then we're gonna say uh, matching items uh, dot let's append it let's we have a few different ways we can do it this will just add it to the end of the list okay um let's get out of that if out of that for and then return matching items when it's all done okay uh we've got two good um two good functions let's go ahead and learn how to call them both and try them out so I'm going to process this first so this function gets saved and stored here in memory. Oh, I got a problem. Matching items. Oh, what did I have that for? You don't need that right there. All right, perfect. So down here, now let's learn how to call these things uh, in, in, uh, in some other program or, or something else. So first of all, let's start with our first one. Let's, let's make our summed list. Let's say we have a list of numbers yeah my list sure why not equals and let's just put a few numbers in there 2 87 41 uh, 0 and 19 okay uh, let's simply sum them up so here's how we do it let's print and we're going to say uh, some list and we're going to pass into some list my list now just to be clear notice that this list right here my list is not the same name as list to sum here remember this can be called whatever we want it to be purple monkey dish water and that'll work just fine we could pass that in right here as the name and it'll get renamed right here to list to sum when this function uses it and it'll refer to list to sum here as it runs its logic so let me undo those. We'll stick with my list and let's start with this one. All right, what did I do here? Sum list is not declared. Uh, oh, I called it sum, not sum list. There we go. This function's called sum. Let's try that one more time. There we go, 149. So right here, we ran a Python function called print. Then we ran our own function called sum, which we defined right here. And we passed into the sum, sum function a list of numbers that we had right here. So remember in the last chapter where we ran the average, uh, where we, we ran a loop on it, on a, we imported CSV, ran a loop and averaged some numbers. Um, although there is an average function that you'll have access to later on that we'll talk about, you could create your own average function. We could say, all right, that's a sum. Let's go ahead and copy this one. And this time, let's take it to another level and create an average function. Average list to 
average. Copy that one, paste it right there. So instead of just adding up all the numbers, when we're done, we need to divide by the number of items in the list, right? So we can just say return, that same number to return, but you know what, let's call it, I think a better term here would be total. And then total equals total plus number in that list. Then we're gonna return the total divided by, so it's so far it's doing exactly what it did before, just adding up all the items. But to make it an average, we just need to divide by the number of items in that list. So let's just use the len function list to average. All right, so it's going to return the total divided by the length. So let's go ahead and run that one now right after this. Print sum, no, not sum, average. And we're going to pass in the same thing, my list. Average is not defined. Did I spell it wrong? Oh, I got to process this one first because I hadn't processed this cell. It hasn't created the average function in memory. So first I'll run that one. Now I can run this one down here and we'll know what it is. Perfect. 149 is the sum. 29.8 is the average. All right, let's call uh, the find matching one now. So down here, let's create a couple of lists or actually just one list. Let's, because I'm not creative, let's use my list again. We'll We'll rewrite. Actually, no, we better not. I'm gonna call it. Um, uh, I'm gonna call this one search list, just because I don't want to overwrite that one in memory. So here, uh, whoops, sorry. Let's since we're gonna put some text and some sentences in here, let's break. Whoops, break our list into a few lines. I haven't showed you how to do that yet. So Python, like many programming languages, ignores white space and hard returns and so what that means is I can put my for opening bracket here closing bracket down there and then um, add my list items right here like this so what I'm gonna do is let's just make three in the list um, because I want to put some sentences in here something simple like this is a sentence then uh, here is another string and then put a sentence here. Okay, beautiful uh, Google search results right here or Google search uh, database. So what we wanna do now is, let's, why don't we ask the user for a search term? Let's make this dynamic. So let's uh, store, I'm gonna call it search term. Um, let's set this equal to, let's collect an input from the user what do you want to search for? All right, beautiful. So they give us a search term, then let's print out, you know, I better do this in a few lines, make it simple. Uh, first of all, let's make another one called search results. Let's set that equal to, we're gonna call our function up here that we created, find matching, we're going to patch in a list, pass in a list to search in. That's our search list right here. That's going to represent this list to search. So again, different name, just because I call it search list here. It actually doesn't matter what I call it here. It's going to be renamed to list to search inside this function. And we don't care what this function does because the idea of a function is it separates concerns. It, it separates dependencies. So what it, what it does with these terms in here isn't seen by what we're what we're doing right here in this line to call that function, um, which is uh, valuable, helps us. So uh, search results is gonna equal, uh, let's call find matching, and we need to pass into it our search list. Search list, and we need to pass in the term that the user wanted to search for, which we just collected in the line above, search term. All right, so we're gonna store the results, and what, is, what, what are the results going to be? What format? Well, we look up here at the function. It's gonna return a variable called matching items. What is matching items? It's a list that we created right here in the function of all of the items in this string that contain the query term, which is down here called the search term, which comes from the user right here. So user passes in a search term, we pass search term into the find matching function, which comes up right here as the term query. This find matching function calls that query right here in an if statement. 
to see if it's in each of the items that we loop through in the list of search. All right, so it might make your head spin a little bit if this is your first time as a programmer, um, but let's go ahead and process this. And once we get it, let's just print out search uh, results. That'll do. All right, let's run that. What do you want to search for? I want to search for, okay, what's in there? How about the word is? Okay, is shows up in two of the results up here. And so our function returns back just those results. Uh, why, don't we, why don't we print it out properly here, one line at a time. Let's go ahead and have a for um, result in search uh, results. And then let's print out just the result one line at a time. Okay, let's run that. Let's search for something else. How about um, the letter A? Let's see what that does. Returns all three of them. Why? Because you can see A is in each one of these. There's an A as well. We only we didn't put any spaces before after the A, so it didn't differentiate between an A that was a word versus an A that uh, was somewhere else. Cool. Let's try it one more time. How about the word... Whoops. Run that one more time. How about the word... If I put in the word sentence like that, I get nothing. How come? Well, because I capitalized the S, and here it's lowercase. So we should modify our function to account for that. We probably, if someone's searching, they probably don't care about case. Or maybe we, maybe they do, but let's assume they don't. How would I modify my function up here? Well, we've learned the, the lower function in other, uh, in prior examples in this book. So let's just use that. Let's change both the query that they give us and the item to lowercase. So I'm going to do that right here. If dot if the query dot lower is an item dot lower, then go ahead and uh, return it as a matching item. So let's try that one more time now. Right here, let's run it. What do you want to search for? Capitalize sentence. Oh, what did I do wrong? I got I got some bad logic somewhere. I still didn't return anything. So right here on my if it says if query dot lower which is sentence, which is now lowercase in item dot lower. Oh, <laughs> I see. I did it again. Whenever I change, because see how this is part of the IPy notebook format. Because I changed my function right here, this is this functions in a separate code snippet. This code snippet doesn't get processed when I process this code snippet down here. It doesn't know that there's a dependency from this code up to here. So if I want my adjustments by adding to lower to be processed as part of the find matching function, I got to come up here and either hit play or hit shift return up here first. So now it's saved my adjustments to dot to lower down uh, up there. So now let me run this one more time and do the same thing again. Sentence, there we go. Put a sentence here, this is a sentence. All right, so these are the basics of, of declaring functions, which is what we did up here. We declared functions and calling the functions, which is what we did down here. Uh, let's stop now, and then we'll do some practice problems in the next module.